Today, I'm giving you seven strategies that you can use these holidays when dealing with difficult family members. Every day I ask myself, what am I doing to live my best life? listening to the Lifelong Learning and Leadership Podcast, brought to you by Three Pines Leadership. Here's your host, success coach, teacher, and mediator, Molly Doris. My name is Coach Molly, and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for checking out this video. I really hope that you get some value out of it. I also hope you subscribe, hit that bell icon, and take a chance at pushing yourself forward. Here at Three Pines Leadership, we strive for balance in all aspects of our lives. We know that each of us has a gift a light to shine on the world. And maybe you haven't uncovered your gift or maybe you're standing in the way of shining your light on the world. But regardless, if you wanna change the world for the better, this is the place for you. Here's how to maintain your integrity in family relationships. Difficult people are everywhere, like it or not. It's pretty certain that at some point in your life, you'll come across a challenging person and will have to find a way to deal with them. It'd be easy to think, why bother? If being around them causes you grief, but it's not that easy, is it? Sometimes we're just forced into situations we have little control over. With the holidays approaching, let's talk about dealing with difficult family members. Being related is one such circumstance where we can't get away from each other. In fact, family members are often the hardest to deal with because they're connected to us in a more complicated and intimate way. With difficult acquaintances like friends, colleagues, lovers, or neighbors, you might have to deal with them for a time either until you, the conflict between you is resolved or you're able to remove yourself from the situation. With family, we are almost obligated to go the extra mile for the sake of the integrity of the family group. In other words, personal relationships may affect the family as a whole. If you don't get along with a family member, it may very well put stress or strain on other family relationships. So what do you do with those people you may not like very much and may not choose to have in your life but are forced to deal with because, well, their family. Strategy number one, don't try and fix the difficult person. Accept them exactly as they are. This applies to all difficult people and not just family, by the way. It's tempting to try to help someone you want to care about. You probably will make some efforts to help them. And sometimes it works, but often your efforts will not be rewarded. In fact, trying to fix someone or make their life better may become a huge headache since the more you do for them, the more they want from you. Accept that they are unable to change, at least at this point in time. Unless you see real change or proof that this person is making an effort to listen and meet you halfway, you can assume that their behavior is what it has always been. It's important to temper your expectations about what others can and want to do. Number two, be present and direct. Know that a person who is trying to stir up conflict can easily set you off emotionally and even physically, possibly raising your heart rate and your blood pressure. Try to avoid getting into a fight or flight response, which inevitably leads to becoming defensive. You do not want an argument or heated discussion. Stay true to yourself, grounded in your own integrity. Be direct and assertive when you express yourself. Stay focused on how you respond. Know when the discussion or argument has escalated to the point of no return, meaning it's no longer about conflict resolution, but just about winning. If it gets to this point, stop the interaction and leave the conversation. Strategy number three, do encourage difficult people to express themselves. Let them fully state their point of view about the issue or the conflict or the problem without interruption. Why do they feel judged or criticized by others? What do they feel people misunderstand about them? What do they want or expect from others? The idea is to remain as neutral as possible. Just listening rather than trying to engage may be enough to allow someone to feel like they have the opportunity to say what's on their mind. Showing respect for others' differences may go a very long way. Strategy number four is watch for trigger topics. 
Inevitably, there will be topics that represent points of disagreement and disharmony. Know what these topics are and be extremely aware when these are brought up. Your past experiences should help you, especially when you're confronted with these delicate subjects. Be prepared to address these issues in a direct, non-confrontational way or to deflect the conflict if the atmosphere becomes too heated. Strategy number five is to know that some topics are absolutely off limits, period. History and experiences should tell you that these subjects should be avoided at all costs. That's not to say that important issues should be permanently avoided. Rather, if your experience dealing with certain issues has left you stressed out or emotionally depleted, and the discussion has not progressed sufficiently along to represent a reproachment, then it's best to avoid the discussion until a time when both parties are willing to move it forward in a constructive way. Strategy number six, it's not about you, usually. Yeah. It's hard not to take things personally, especially when you're attacked or made to feel responsible for someone else. But if you look at the anatomy of a conflict, you can see how these often play out. Notice how people progressively move through a discussion or an argument. Usually, it initially centers around a specific topic or a disagreement or a response that made a person upset. If allowed to continue, the argument can become heated accelerating quickly to personal attacks, which often includes trying to make you feel responsible or guilty for not responding the way that someone wants you to respond. If you've been through this kind of interaction before, make a concerted effort to imagine it unfolding before it actually does, and then nip it in the bud. And finally, strategy number seven, your own well-being should always come first. While you want to be respectful and attentive to others as much as you can, you don't ever want to bend over backwards or twist yourself into a knot just to make someone else happy or satisfied or just to keep the peace. Never allow any personal interaction or relationship to infringe upon or challenge your own well-being. Visualize your boundaries, that protective territory between you and someone else. No one is entitled to occupy your space unless you invite them in. And then there's that special situation where families get together for a special occasion or holiday. It's best to plan ahead so that you have a good idea about how time will be spent with your relatives. Don't leave too much unplanned time. You don't want to get into a situation where you're left alone with a difficult family member. A situation where you're left alone with a difficult family member with whom you have an issue or a conflict. Someone who confronts, challenges, incites, aggravates, and basically pushes your buttons. Instead, surround yourself with people you get along with. Supportive people who care about you. People who are here to enjoy time together. Well, that's it for me this episode. I'm going to go spend some time with my family. Remember, you can find us on all of your favorite podcast streaming platforms, as well as with video on YouTube. And until next time, remember, I love you and be excellent to each other.